Today, we are talking about Tailwind CSS and more broadly, what happens when AI obliterates your business model. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. For those of you who are not coders and not technical, there is actually a cheat code that will allow you to live at least a little bit in the future. At least when it comes to understanding AI, how tools are going to be used, what new processes are taking hold, and what disruption to knowledge work looks like by watching what actual software engineers and developers who are deep in the AI space are talking about, thinking about, and struggling with is as close to living in the future as you can get. Now, I talked about this a little bit in end-of-year episodes when it came to some of my vibe coding predictions. In short, I think a lot of other sectors of knowledge work outside of coding will have their work vibified in 2026 in the way that developers did in 2025. But it's not just positive change that we get to preview. In many ways, even as software engineering is the area where AI is enabling the greatest leverage that didn't exist before, it's also the area that is most struggling with disruption and change to what the very essence of the profession means. That is playing out on both an individual level, where as we saw in the Claude Code episode from earlier this week, some developers are struggling with the existential question of what it means to be a developer in this new paradigm, but it's also playing out on a business and organizational level. Earlier this week, the story of Tailwind went viral. Tailwind maintains an open source CSS framework that allows web developers to speed up front end development. It is extremely popular among developers and among AI coding tools. Tailwind's model is free and open source, with a paid plus tier that drives revenue. Where the story started to pick up was actually from a comment on GitHub. A user was asking for a text only version of the documentation to make it more easily ingested by AI. CEO Adam Wathen responded, I totally see the value in the feature, and I would like to find a way to add it, but the reality is that 75% of the people on our engineering team lost their jobs here yesterday because of the brutal impact AI has had on our business. And every second I spend trying to do fun free things for the community like this is a second I'm not spending trying to turn the business around and make sure the people who are still here are getting their paychecks every month. Now, he went on to note that traffic to their documentation is down 40% compared to 2023, despite Tailwind being more popular than ever. This is a problem because, as Adam put it, the docs are the only way people find out about their commercial products. And without customers paying for that plus tier, they can't maintain the framework. Net net, while Tailwind was growing faster than it ever had and was bigger than it had ever been, their revenue was down close to 80%. So the way that this subverts the narrative of AI disruption is that this isn't AI undermining the need for something. The product is more popular than ever. The problem is just that the AI doesn't need the documentation that leads customers to the paid product. And while open source software being difficult to monetize and build a startup around is nothing new, it was this unique catch-22 of AI adoption, where AI was driving more usage but driving down revenue, that had people sit up and take notice. Santiago tweeted, Tailwind laid off 75% of their team. At a time when Tailwind is more popular than ever, their revenue is down close to 80%. LLMs did this. If we don't figure this out, we'll end up with a massive graveyard of abandonware. Yash Barge was summed up. Their CSS framework became extremely popular with AI coding agents, 75 million downloads a month. That meant nobody would visit their docs where they promoted paid offerings, resulting in a 40% drop in traffic and 80% loss in revenue. Nick Papa George writes, Tailwind is a canary. AI can work with the grittier open source version of anything now. So there's no need for the premium dev-friendly DX forward version. Auth, databases on and on. will change things quickly in my opinion. Valentin Ignatiev writes, Making a business on top of open source software was already near impossible, and now OSS maintainers who want to earn money are extra screwed. AI will scrape your project site, users will never visit it for documentation, and will never know about your commercial product. And we're not talking about some random small library. This is the world's most used CSS framework that's growing day by day. At this point, the only thing you'll be able to do in open source is upselling LLM tokens. Now, this particular story actually ends on a more positive note. On Wednesday, CEO Adam recorded a podcast on his morning walk discussing the situation his company was in. People responded to it for its openness and transparency, and the post ended up with almost 2 million views. By that evening, the donations had started to come flooding in. Logan Kilpatrick announced that Google AI Studio had become a sponsor of the project. Antoine Osika from Lovable writes, Every app built on Lovable uses Tailwind and we owe them a lot. We're now sponsoring them, and I genuinely encourage fellow founders to do the same. And the fellow founders piled on. Superbase added themselves to the list, saying we're excited to become a Tailwind partner and will continue to support their tremendous contributions to the industry. Guillermo, the CEO of Vercel, said Vercel will be officially sponsoring Tailwind CSS. That's a given. Tailwind is foundational web infrastructure at this point. I've also reached out to Adam to explore how we can make this a longer-term commitment. Gumroad, Cursor, the list goes on and on and on. The challenge, though, is that this isn't necessarily an isolated incident. Another interesting story from this week is that of Stack Overflow. 
For the non-programmers in the audience, Stack Overflow is a forum that's been around since 2008 to answer programming questions. If you think about it as Reddit for programming, you're roughly on the right track. Throughout the 2010s, Stack Overflow was pretty close to critical infrastructure for the tech industry. It could help beginners figure out straightforward issues, but it also had a deep user base of incredibly knowledgeable coders. If you had an expert problem with a barely used language, it was a pretty good bet that the small handful of people in the world that could answer your question could be found on Stack Overflow. Even before ChatGPT launched, Stack Overflow seemed to have reached its peak. However, there is absolutely no denying that when ChatGPT launched, it completely obviated the need for the site. In short, there was no point in trawling through forum posts when all of that was to be found somewhere in the AI training data that could be surfaced with a natural language query. All the way back in July of 2023, Elon Musk called Stack Overflow's plight death by LLM. Now, the reason that the slow-motion demise of Stack Overflow is back in the news this week is that it finally reached the end. Last month, the forum registered 6,866 queries, roughly the same as their first month way back in 2008. That's down from a peak of 300,000 queries a month at its top in 2020, and it's consistently more than 150 to 200,000 that it had for almost a decade before that. And so the question for all of this is what it adds up to. In the case of Stack Overflow, there's an interesting broader implication of what happens when there's no longer a need for massive open repositories of human knowledge. If there's no longer a culture of building giant forms full of human expertise on the open web, that creates a challenge even for AI. As Effect fully puts it, Stack Overflow's downfall will send shockwaves far into the future because there will no longer be a source of high-quality, well-structured data to train AI on. But what about when it comes to Tailwind and the dramatic shifts to business model that AI represents? Now, to be fair, although Tailwind CSS is a beloved product, some people pointed out that it was never a super solid business. Daniel Jeffries wrote, I'm having a lot of trouble buying this AI killed my business narrative for Tailwind, although I feel for the excellent team who does incredible work. It took me a bit of hunting to even find that Tailwind has products by digging around their site. Any good marketing person will tell you to make those offerings front and center. Even in the age of AI-centric coding, my team buys a lot of SaaS. That awareness problem can be fixed with a good marketing person who makes the offerings jump out. And speaking of those offerings, it also looks like the offerings are one-time purchase, so there's no compounding revenue, and it's also supported by donations. Having lived off donations with a nonprofit, I felt firsthand what it's like to go from 2 million in donations to practically nothing overnight because the market shifted. In short, AI didn't kill Tailwind. AI exposed a fragile business model. Docs traffic down because LLMs answered questions directly. UI kits down because LLMs generate UI instantly. One-time purchases down because there's no recurring value. Popularity up, but value capture near zero. That's not an AI governance failure. That's no moat and no recurring revenue. Open source has faced this exact problem many times. MongoDB fixed it with Atlas. Elastic fixed it with hosting services. GitLab fixed it with enterprise tiers. Tailwind just hasn't crossed that bridge yet. I hope this fine team finds their way, but the AI killed by business is a bit off the mark in more ways than one, and our willingness to just accept this story at face value these days is depressing. Akash Gupta explored this as well. He wrote, what's the fix? The path forward probably requires building something AI can't replace. Services, consulting, enterprise contracts, deep integrations that require human judgment, or build features that actually get better with scale instead of just hoping people stumble on your pricing page. But as Akash points out, the whole situation is a preview of what's coming for information businesses generally. If your value is answering questions that AI can now answer, your moat just vanished. And that, I think, is the interesting consideration. This might be happening in the context of development now, but it will have similar seismic effects in other areas in the months and years to come. For my part, I think it'll be interesting to see what comes next. Tailwind represents this interesting category that's almost like a public good at this point. Certainly the way that companies rose up to try to support it suggests for that interpretation. One possibility, as suggested by Balaji Srinivasan, one of the big AI companies should consider acquiring Tailwind or do a strategic investment and maybe rehire all the devs. They've given the ecosystem so much. In other words, basically a big patron just secures the public good for the market for perpetuity. Another approach was proposed by Nat Eliasson, who wrote, With the Tailwind news, it would be cool if Claude Code let me pay 1% more to automatically contribute to the open source projects I use based on my token spend. Or they could just do it. So will we see a different conception of public goods and digital infrastructure arise? I'm not sure, but like I said at the beginning, if you want to get a preview of what everyone else is going to be dealing with six months from now, there's basically not much better you can do than watching what developers are talking about right now. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.